I, I ain't did none of that. I ain't did none of that yet. I ain't did none of that yet. So we gotta get the um get the technicalities together. I sent that invite. Um, I won't turn on music because of where I'm sitting my other other spot, my other phone. I won't do the I won't do the elevator music, even though you know that's how I get down. Do you got? Do you want? Do you want to play music? I can. Okay. Yeah, I can. That might as well give us another uh, two or three minutes. Hey y'all! Welcome in! Welcome in! I'm gonna talk a little bit. Let me get a water. So let me do the opening announcements. How about that? Let's do that. All right. Let me get mine. So hey y'all, hey, hey y'all, hey. My name is Christian. I am your favorite life coach and I'm just here tonight to talk a little bit about the back to school blues. Um I have my good 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 sis, my good sis Natalie with me tonight. And basically what we talking about, we are just having our regular conversation on live, okay? We real, we raw. We just going to keep it honest. Um, I want y'all to know that what we talk about, um, we had to experience it. We had to go through it. We had to deal with it. We dealing with it. We're experiencing it in, a, in real time. But I wanted to share it with y'all a little bit, a little snippet of what we talk about uh, on the regular as it pertains to our babies, getting them ready for school, and just making sure that we are in tip-top shape. Again, I am a life coach, and my area of exper expertise is self-care and self-mastery. So I'll be coming from that angle tonight. I'm always going to figure out how you can be better in whatever life throws you. Life is going to life. That's what we can for sure count on. Life is going to do what it's going to do, and it's up to us to handle it the best we know how. So I'm just going to help you do that. That's just me, Natalie. You want to introduce yourself, or how you want to do that? You already do it. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Nat. I'm Natalie. Um, I consider myself a. Of course, my music is loud. Is it too loud? No, you good. Okay. Um, so I'm Natalie Ward. I am a behavior specialist. Um, I love all things behaviors, finding out the function of the behaviors, and working with parents on de-escalating behaviors, working with educators on setting that climate control so that we can have as little as behaviors in this we really were already um kind of having this conversation and i was like we need to just take these conversations to a different platform is my um hold on sorry there we go so yeah that's that's really it it's just our conversations that we regularly have we're just like you know some input and like dang i wish somebody else could hear this like this is real and that's just that's just really all it is that back to school like okay Chrissy what you doing like are you are you ready and she's like nah what you over there working on and so it's really just like that like opening up the platform so that we have a safe space as parents as educators as aunties uncles and identifying hey how are we doing this thing how are we out here surviving because I don't know about y'all but everybody needs help and and we're all still learning as far as this parenting and self-care and just together how much self-care and parenting go together it's just like ah! okay <laughs> let's do this <laughs> so yeah so um i wanted to make sure and let me say this before we go we are live Shifting. Yeah, I'm trying to like, okay. where do I want this? <laughs> okay, so you know, if you see a shifting, that is why, okay? So, we want to a good amount of people. Do me a quick favor, so if y'all are in here, do me a quick favor, share this to somebody, share this to a parent who you know about to get their baby ready to go back to school, okay? Yeah. Share this to somebody. You may not be a parent, but you might know a parent. Um, share it out because we want to be able to not keep all this goodness to ourselves, to be able to share it and let it reach who it needs to reach. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I took some notes and 
one of the main things that I feel like um, we need to tap in, and I just had the conversation with my boys yesterday, was that bedtime routine. It's time to jump back into bedtime. Time to go to bed. Get ready. So that's what we had. Okay. I, how was it? Like, how did they how did they take going back into that routine? Well, first of all, you know the little one is like, oh, like that's stupid. So <laughs> his bedtime is too early, right? Yeah. My oldest. Okay, so y'all, just for background, I have an eight year old and I have a fifteen year old. Boys, I'm a boy mom, but. They, my youngest is, my oldest is just like, mm. whatever. Yeah. But you know what else I mean, I know that I was like, I'm going to add into my life to actually start? Start. Mm -hmm. take it away in a way to buy it that night. And I don't need to do that for my oldest son. I don't need to do that. But taking his device away at bedtime. I was like, y'all, I'm really concerned. And I was like, and you know, like, sometimes you want to be, you know, you know real fancy, but, but I also don't want to get them away from that because, because I want you to shut your brain down before it's time to get to sleep. Yeah. I want you to have a new life. 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 Yep. Um, Y'all might as well call me the, 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 the call me the captain, the authoritative parent, the whatever label you want to call me. Cause baby, they going to bed at eight thirty, and electronics stop at seven. <laughs> like I have been, I have to. I, I did some research in the blue light, and really understanding what that blue light, that light that is given off before they go to bed. It's literally yeah. telling our kids, hey, stay awake. This is intriguing. Want to learn more? And they put these things into these shows, even Coco Melon and all these different things, the types of lights that they use, the type of things that they put into these shows to get your kids to want more and more, even just the voices. Hi, guys. Welcome. And it's like all of that is to get them hyped up and get them uh, engaged. These are all exactly. shows that we want during the day to keep our child engaged. Engaged. But if they're still watching it 10 minutes before it's time to go to sleep, their body and their brain is telling them engage and, and be happy and, you know, watch this. And so that light is just really keeping their brains awake. And so I try, try, try to get it away from them and enough time for them to go back to sleep. But introducing to them, and I said two weeks, I did two weeks. So I'm like, okay, we're in this bedtime routine. And oh, I, I, I heard all of it. Mom, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> Why do I have to? Well, I'm going to second grade now, so really I should stay up till nine. And I'm like, mm -mm. Good night. sorry, sis. Sorry, sis. Like it's it, it, it's it's a task. But I'm like, if I, I would rather start it two weeks before school starts than trying to get this the night before or the weekend before. You're gonna run into some stuff. You're really gonna I mean, run think, into some stuff. I think that's the reason why I wanted to talk to them about it. Like, and we needed to. This is where I don't want them to be blindsided. You know, like, let's, let's stop there for a second. Like, yeah. to shock them with something that's gonna change change their routine, change their routine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Communicating with them ahead of time, I feel like we're softening the blow of I'm about to take your stuff. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I do limit <clears throat> screen time, like during the school year and stuff like that. But yeah. I did not make them turn them in. Mm. And I think that's going to be the difference because when they go to their room, mm -hmm. I'm, there, I'm in my room. Right, right. So it's like... I get it. That turning in part, and I, 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 I'm going to be like, I'm not in I'm not in Nope. It's the first one nope. the fight. Yeah. I and I, like I get that. But at the same time, I do think that it's more beneficial. So this might be a hard thing I have to do as a parent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I think I think even even us as parents, we want them to stay up a little bit later because we know they're gonna sleep in a little bit longer. And I think that's the selfish part of me. Like if they stay up just about an hour later. But really, honestly, I know personally, again, as a behavior specialist, the sleepy child is gonna show behaviors. The hungry child is gonna show behaviors. The you know, not the not exactly when you're sleepy. When you're tired, do you are you more likely to say something you probably shouldn't have said, or are you more likely to kind of lose focus? Like it's, it's if we think and put ourselves in our kids' shoes, we're sending this child who only had four hours of sleep to go off with the next person and expecting them to behave as angels. What was wrong with you today? Why would you? Why why were you acting like that? Since you know they stayed up till twelve o'clock. You know they were. You know good and well they was up all night. He, so when it was time to really focus and sit down and listen, they were unable to do so because they were tired. This no longer is the, all the fault of the child, but again, as the parent, we have to take that responsibility. Like we allowed our child to stay up this late so we could stay up, you know, so we could sleep in a little bit longer, but it's selfish because I have to literally frequently look and see, okay, for age eight, how much sleep should they really be getting? And like, that's something. Honestly, I'm about to Google that right now because let's do it. And I'm just going to do it for my age. Just, mm -hmm. just for the heck of it. And you got to um, keep, in, keep in mind developmentally appropriate too. Because I know sometimes they, if you guys like search certain things, like what chores should my six year old be doing? Well, yeah, your six year old yeah, may be at a different developmental age than another person's six year old because this one may know how to deal with responsibilities a lot different than this one. This one can only make their bed, but this one knows how to sweep the floor. Again, it's just, I think that certain charts should go off of developmental things but i mean that's a whole different story but they do have those those age ranges and so i try to stay between at 8 30 9 o'clock but i'm also a human and i'm not a parent to say like oh my children and they go to bed at 8 30 every night because yeah no that's not me sometimes there's practices there's we got bible studies somebody's rehearsal something that's gonna make us you know go to bed a little bit later yeah. and i was one of those moms that i wanted my children so badly to succeed and to do well that I was hard on myself with my routines. You have some parents who do no routines, some parents who stick to those routines really, really hard. And then you got the people that's like, I have the routines in place just in case something happens, but you know, I'm not stuck to it. I was stuck and I was like, nope, you can't come over because I have a routine. I gotta cook. No, no, it was bad. But I think, sorry, my, I lost my dogs out. Speaking of routines, I feel like I, well, I, I don't feel like I know that children work better, some adults too, when there's a set routine. I know what to expect, I know what's coming, and that just makes it easier. So I set a routine for them and for you. Mm -hmm. It's so beneficial. So it's like, find a flow. Like, Monday might look different than Thursday. Mm -hmm. But at least we know every Monday this is happening. Every Thursday this is happening. Yep. And I feel like that lets them feel kind of personal excitement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And even if we, we talk about school, like kids know when they go to school, they know they have a bell ring. They know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They got to say red fold around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're a routine. They're a routine. They're a routine. They're a routine. And a lot of times, they don't have that experience. So they don't have that at home. Nope. And so, and so it's like, I'm structured. They know what it's like. 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 They know I think what I know you look, that's Jackson and Jazzy. I kicked them out. <laughs> but I think when you go when you went into routines, you kind of went into the bullet after, which is transitions. And I think that transitions inside of routines is something that we have to look at with our kids because even with transitions, if you think about like uh, a kid that is getting ready, it's time for them to get in the shower. If you went up to your child and was like, hey, it's time to get in the shower right now, go get in the shower right now, and they're in the middle of playing a game, and you just they're just like, well, dang, if I had, you know, the five-minute warning, I would at least known or exactly. a countdown or something like that. They abruptly was like, hey, 
it's time to go now. Like, you know, what if somebody came into your room and was like, hey, Chrissy, get up right now. It's time to go to work. Like, dang, I, I need, like, yeah, like, wait a minute. Can you ask me nicely? Hold on, I got five more minutes. And that's what I think about with my kids. Like, oh, hey, guys, 30 minutes till bedtime. Okay, guys, we're down. All right, 20 more minutes until bedtime. All right, guys, 10 minutes. And why do you have to count down to your kids? Why? Because so they know what's next. Then, and it's not abrupt. If your boss came in your office and said, hey, Sasha, I need you down to such and such right now. I said right now, like, you know, the, your tone of voice, how much time did you give them? Did you give them a heads up? Are they in a routine so that they know this is what happens next? And you know, after that, I know I do have to go to bed. We sometimes forget that these little humans are still humans. And what you want done to you, how you do your kids. You know, you didn't even give them a heads up. It's time to get in the bed because I said so. Well, dang, they couldn't have had five more minutes. Only yeah. because that just gets their mind ready. Okay, I got five more minutes. Let me get everything I got to get out, out of the way in these last five minutes. Transitions are not just for adults that we get to, you know, oh, I know I had that project coming up for a week. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Like, this is like, you know what I'm saying? Teaching and learning. learning yeah. And teaching. Because if he would have tantrumed when he came in that house, like, man, she get on my nerves. I swear to God, she didn't even give me five. Let me get a Dang. What part of the world I want to get in the house? Yeah. Yeah. But I could have gave a warning because I knew I had this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you petty. <laughs> Listen, I'm but, just trying to be real. I thought I saw him. Damn. But I need to get the sleep hours. Okay, what's the sleep hours looking like? It just depends on what time they get up for school, too. Ooh. So, okay, I might need to go a little bit of it. Yes, it is. I don't even know if my kids can sleep that long. Jeez. But if they saying, look, this is the recommended for your child to succeed and be fully rested and ready to take on the day, then, hey. But I know I can't do okay. no earlier than 8.30. <laughs> okay, well, this is just what they recommend. They Baseline. The CDC, okay? So that's that's what the CDC says recommended hours for those particular age groups. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Yeah, because it like, definitely does. Even not just that, though. Getting a, a good amount of sleep like that. You are in a better mental shape. Yes. You're better mental shape. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Function better when mm -hmm. you have to be alive. You need to have time to do it. You need to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Another thing, just as a little side note, I, this ain't written down, but this is something that I had to get on to my friends about. But I know that other parents do. Stop cooking dinner so late. Whoa. And then the kids are going to eat dinner at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Stop doing it. Mm -hmm. now, I don't generally do that during the school year. I don't do that time I have, okay? Yeah, we've been a little late. You can't do that one. Your food needs time to digest. Yeah. You want your body working when it should be sleeping and resting and recuperating for the next day. Uh -huh. Two, we do know that you pack on the pounds with you at nighttime. So uh -huh. eating right before bed is doing what? 
Okay, then. Okay, yeah. Then. Yeah. I don't know what I was going to say for number three. Yeah, it is. I, I don't think that we take enough accountability of how much we are adding to our children's obesity. We should be taking accountability uh, uh, because of that. I mean, if your child is eating at 930 at night and now, you know, some circumstances are different where, you know, hey, well, look, Nat, I'm a single mom and I don't get in until this time and this, 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 that. And the third, you know, I, I, I completely empathize with you and, you know, do what you can do to the best yeah. of your ability and, you know, lean on your community to help wherever you can. And, you know, hats off to you because I know that a lot of y'all are doing what you can. So I don't want you to think that our tip strategies or, you know, the real and raw moments of these lives are to bash you, but to make you hold up the mirror. And a lot of times I, it, that is what parenting to me is. It's just like, dang, do I do this? Like, it's just looking in the mirror and taking accountability like, oh, this Natalie is not that cute and it's uncomfortable is cringe a little bit to really realize that dang that one does stick to me that one i do do but i want to take accountability and be like dang i am going to start cooking earlier you know something as simple as that or i am going to you know watch what my child is watching or monitor how long they're on their electronics or try to get up some type of routine for my children to, to know what's what's coming next so that it's not just ab abrupt or transitions are not just out of nowhere. It's to a point where we have to take accountability as adults, like, hey, I'm doing this, you know, or I'm bleeding on my child or what's overflowing out of my cup is something that they probably should not be drinking. And it's time for me to clean up what's going in and coming out of this cup, what's going into that cup because what's overflowing is going into your child's cup. And yes. that's just right. really that's just really what it is. You saying that in a really um in a really nice way. Yeah. That was really, like <laughs> cute and cuddly. That really was. Like it really was. Yeah. Because it's hard to parent and to really just come out and be like, you're this, you're that, you're da 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 da. Like sometimes I come off like that and sometimes I gotta check myself like, dang, they may not know. And even being a behavior specialist, you know how I get, I going then and then having these parents like, I know I'm a bad mom or I'm a bad educator, I'm a bad this. No, you, you, you just don't know. You yeah. just don't know. And if ain't nobody ever told you, how would you know? And that's yeah. why this space right here is for us, for the parents who just don't know. I'm not a bad parent, but I'm going to be a better parent. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. That, that, that's all that that is. Like, yeah. that, that's really it. That's it. That's what I was going to say. Like, I'm not on here to bash nobody because like right. I said, we're living. We're living and we learn and we experience it all in real time. Mm -hmm. like, we might got a couple of techniques, but yeah. we have to implement this stuff for our real children and our mm -hmm. real life. Like for real, for real. I'm not going to bash nobody, but I'm not about to be cute and cuddly with it either because it's really past being the time for us to be on top of our head. It's time to wake up. We don't woke like, up about everything else in this world. Yeah. I wish I could be cute and cuddly all the time. But <laughs> I don't got time for that. We are behind. Yeah. As it pertains to that. Yeah. And I love you with my whole heart. Mm hmm. But come on with it, okay? Come on with it. I really don't got time but to cuddle your feelings, okay? Go to therapy. Yes. Yeah, come on. All right? come on. Therapy, That's come it. On, we got to get it together. That's Melissa it. Melissa says, I have been having a schedule. Mm -hmm. Yes. Having a schedule. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even in life coaching, okay? Even in life coaching, I tell y'all, schedule your self-care time. Yeah. Put it on the calendar just like everything else. So being on a schedule is something that is gonna make your life and your children's life a mm -hmm. whole lot easier. Yeah. High five to you, girl. Yes. Plan. I use Listen, a visual schedule. Even half of the list, okay? Yep. We, I got you see this? <laughs> to talk about. We, we number one. Okay? Yeah. Bullet point number one. We yeah. ain't gonna yeah. nowhere. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's still, I feel like it's still a whole lot to to cover and to go through, but it ain't gonna all happen. In one yeah, for real. It ain't gonna all happen in one night. Okay? For real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, okay, so so let me let me get another. Let 
What it? <laughs> ah, look, give it to him, Chrissy. Give it to him. <laughs> no, because, okay, so some of it I don't want to get into because I don't want to make this too long because I don't want to do it again. Right, okay. So, so, so some of these are good points. I feel like we'll say the next one. Got you. Which one? Because if you get into it to another one, it's going to be another hour. Yeah. Um... I mean, is there certain questions? Is there things that um, that our parents or educated? Oh, I, I something. Okay, let's talk about this this year. Um, what we talking about? What you said? I think that we should touch on um, building relationships with their educators, with the teachers. Or do you want to touch? Oh, I know. Um, that's that's a, that's a, that's. A, that's that one could definitely expand, but it is oh, it could go pretty long if we touch on that. But I mean, we can talk about parenting triggers. So let's just do it, okay? So let's just do it. I mean, or we we could do that, or we could talk about parenting triggers. Teachers. Okay, let's do. That. You want to start or me? <laughs> okay. Okay. So the next topic that we want to talk about is connecting with your child's yeah. teacher. And I wanted to talk about that because I've heard from the teachers because I got I got a couple educator friends. But one of the biggest things is that parents are not showing up, they're not involved, they don't hear from some parents they don't hear from all school year, like they just know that this child shows up to class every day and they get picked up, but there is no other parental guardian, no other type of interaction. And I find that to be a big, 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 big red flag, okay? Like I said, I'm not here to be cute and cuddly with you. I am not here to, you know what I'm saying, baby you. Because we grown and got babies, okay? Yeah. All right, amen. Yeah. It is bizarre to me that there are parents who don't, there's no communication with your, with your teacher. Mm -hmm. But let some stranger walk down the street and try to just take your baby. You're going to be, you know yeah. there's going to be a problem. Right. But you're sending your kid to that school with that stranger, Davey. Mm -hmm. I got problems with that. Mm -hmm. And reason being is not just because your child needs you, but the educator as well needs you. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. You know your child. You can communicate um, well, he does really good when he's sitting on the floor. He's more comfortable, you know, reading on the floor. It's, that's that's something that I get from my kids. Yeah. Um, they, I don't know why they like the floor. They got a whole bed, but they'll sleep on the floor. Sometimes. Yes, they will. Like, like, yep. I don't know. Yep. But when I communicate that with her teacher, instead of them getting yelled at for sitting on the floor, she's like, oh. She told me he's gonna do that. Mm -hmm. It's not a red flag, it's not an alarm, he's not being defiant. Mm -hmm. This is just where he's more comfortable to do what he needs to do, right? Right. So yeah. so so it's really important for us to show up for our children in that way and connect them with the teachers. I was supposed to be laying a foundation and not going all into that. No, that's good. That's really good. That's that I'm gonna let Natalie play, y'all. I'm gonna let her do that part. But really though, like we have to you you wouldn't let your child go with any of the things. Yeah. You wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Right? That's facts. Y'all know this to do y'all watch the news? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Do we watch the news? So it's not bizarre for me to say probably should go talk to your teacher mm -hmm. and then another thing is and then i'm about to pass the mic i'm about to be done for real no you're good and you're good like not all teachers are good teachers and that's just that but i wouldn't know that if i didn't go visit the school mm -hmm. if i didn't go talk to the teacher i wouldn't know that she got a little attitude problem mm -hmm. so when she's writing that note you know what i'm saying saying that's not that yeah because right? you have attitude too teacher you know yeah know? So it's like I I can discipline better. I can show up better when I know everything that's involved. I know everybody's involved. You know what I mean? Yep. Like yeah. I'm quick to pack my things and get on the about it. Okay. So if I don't like a teacher, 
Back, we go. We're going to call another person. Yeah. That's valid. That's so good. Okay, so you know, Chrissy gonna give y'all the whooping, and I'm gonna try to come in and, and, and rub it in a little bit. So coming from, and, and I want you guys to hear from the educators' piece as well as from the parent piece. So from the educator standpoint, I want you guys to look at it like this: you, your child went through something at home and it may have been detrimental or it really really changed your child and school's coming they've had anxiety they've been going through it and they're just really not wanting to go to school you know this you're, the educator doesn't so the educator gets to your child and doesn't know why the child wants to sit by himself and doesn't really want to play with anybody or really talk to anybody who she pairs this child with they're not really having the best relationships and the teacher's just wondering why what's going on and then now you're seeing now she's second weekend. She's seeing that this child is becoming let's let's think of a younger child. So say like four, the child has become more combative and you, like, I don't even know this kid and, and he's pushing people away and not sharing. But you know that this is something happened. Um, mom was, you know, you mom, know was last night. mom was displaced from the home and that was a major dynamic change for little tommy and you know this you know that he's been having a hard time sleeping he's not eating like he used to and you know this and you sent your child to school on the first day of school and this teacher is thinking that your child is behavioral this child is throwing things he won't talk to people your child is behavioral and you're like no that's not my child but instead all from day one, all we had to do was have a conversation with your teacher. Hey, this is my child. This is the things my child likes. These are the things my child doesn't like. This is what my child has been through. This is what I see worked with my child last year. This is what didn't work with my child last year. This is so that you guys can start building that relationship because I promise you, if you start the year with a relationship with the educator, believe me, when something's a little bit off, that educator is, is quick to sh shoot you a text message or, or call you before it gets to that extreme because you have a relationship with that educator and they're like, mm, your mama wouldn't go for this or exactly. uh, something, something is off. And you know, some you know, I've had those relationships with my teachers because, hey, look, okay. I don't know what's going on, but big man Reese did not want to eat breakfast this morning and he was super lethargic. I checked his temperature, everything was good, but I just wanted to keep a, send you a text so that we're on the same page. And what does that mean? When he put his head down during language arts, she didn't quickly yell at him like he was disregarding the message. She knew that he may have been under the weather because I communicated with that teacher. So again, communication goes a long way with as far as the educator and the teacher. Now, as a parent, I hope and pray that I have a teacher that is willing to text me and let me know, hey, Livy seems off today. Or, hey, this is what happened while your child was on red and what I tried to do before. Educators have to stand up and not be so afraid of, these, of, of, of parents. The parents want to communicate most of the time. And so coming from the from the educator who trained the educator. It's like, you guys have to not be afraid of the parent. They're not bad parents. And any educator that wants to continue to sit there and say that they are bad parents, they're not bad parents. I had a lady who continuously would say, Natalie, and as I was a behavior specialist, she would say, Natalie, she's just a bad mom. She comes in every day, she picks up this child. And then every time I'm trying to talk to her, she's like, she's always in a rush and just, I don't have time, I don't have time. And she's quick to go out. She's such a bad mom. And so when I finally sat down and I talked to the mom, do you know what I found out? Mom had three jobs and four children. And so in between jobs, mom was going to pick up this child and going to drop him off with their older sibling so she can go to the next job and go after that, pick up another sibling. She wasn't a bad mom. She was not a bad mom. She was a busy mom. She was a mom. busy mom. She was a busy mom. And so educators, not every single parent is a bad parent. But parents, we have to learn we cannot parent these kids as our grandparents, aunties, and uncles did it. Now we're starting to take some communication. Not only do we have to communicate with the educator, and the educator has to communicate with the parent, but parents, you have to communicate with the child. It's communication all around the board. and But more so, when a, teacher, when a child knows, hey, my mama's going to talk to my teacher, they're, more, they're not likely to show their behinds in that classroom. 
Cause I know he, she got my mama number. <laughs> yeah. And that's what works for me. And they know good and well, my children at their school. I know half them teachers up there. Try me. Yep. And they look out for mine. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Hey, I seen such and such in the hallway knowing good and well she wasn't exactly. supposed to be in there. That's and that right there. Next is because even though Okay, so both of my kids are went to the same elementary school. So my 15 year old, he's going to high school, right? But he went to the same school that my youngest son went to. So they all know the type of parent that I am. Mm -hmm. So when Amir started doing weird stuff, you better have to believe. It was like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And it was his, his teacher. It was other teachers mm -hmm. who knew mm -hmm. mama don't go for that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There were also times when other teachers in the building would acknowledge, oh, he was so good at such and such. But I hear that because I'm present. Mm -hmm. And I yep. realize not everybody can be present, right? Not everybody can get off of work and go roam around the school right. and do what y'all doing in here. You know what I'm mm saying? -hmm. Not everybody can do that. So for the mom that's working four, five, six, six jobs, yeah, to make sure the lights stay on. Mm -hmm. All right, because I, I did that too. I used to leave my little office job, go drop, mm, yeah, God, drop the babies off and go to J C Penny for the yeah. you know what I'm for the next year. Yeah. I remember when. So I'm coming from a place of relatability. Yeah. We've never done that, all right? Um, shoot a text message, mm -hmm. an email. You can't be there, but do something to say, hey. You can even tell your teacher, I'm working three jobs, all right? Yeah, communicate. You know, and I, we sometimes they don't need to be all in my business, but maybe they do so you can stay with me. Yep. So your little Johnny ain't, you know what I'm saying? Get beat up on and nobody. Yeah, knows. You know your teacher should be a part of your village, and I, I strongly believe that your teachers should be a part of your village. Exactly. That should be somebody who you this this especially elementary uh, children or um, early childhood age kids. This teacher is with your child just as much as you are, uh, more, Think if not that. more, and so. More. And so you, the, your child should respect their edu their teacher, and they sh you should have a conversation, be able to have a conversation with them, because again, they're part of your village. They're gonna see when behaviors are off. They know when they're sick. They can start seeing the signs. Oh, he's about to go off. He, they they start to know your child just as much as you do, and so they should be a part of the loop, just like you told everybody else he was sick. Did you tell his teacher? Just like you told everybody else he broke his ankle at Sky Zone. Did you tell his teacher? Oh, well, just like you told everybody else that he scored a touchdown at that game and he was super excited and showed and expressed his emotions. Did you tell his teacher? They, Yo. the, your teachers should automatically be a part of your community. They're a part of your village. They should be supporting. Hey, look, he's been off the chain with his chores all week and I'm giving him major love. I'm giving him major verbal praise and this, this, this. I just wanted to let you know because I don't know what he's doing at school, but he's doing great here. Keeping that communication, not only the negative stuff. And don't be afraid to ask the teachers if you start seeing challenging behaviors in your children or changes or you know they're going through some stuff. Don't don't be afraid to ask the teacher for more communication. Hey, can we get a communication communication journal going? Or do you mind if I shoot you a text? Or if you're busy and you can't talk at the school, let them know. Hey, look, I work three jobs, but I'm able between the hours of six and eight, I can do a phone call. And you know, yes, that's after hours, but there's educators who are out there that love. Money don't mean a thing to them. They love and they show up for those babies. And so if that means communicating with that parent at six o'clock at night, then that's just what it is. Because I know for a fact, a lot of educators who go above and beyond that final mark, they're grading off hours. They're picking up hygiene items for children that aren't theirs. They are supporting them by going to baseball and basketball games because nobody else is able to sit there and support them. They're standing in the gap for parents. But again, not every educator is the same. Not every parent is the same. But y'all got to communicate this year. Off yes. the jump. Off the jump. Especially if you knew your child had challenging behaviors. I'm coming from the behavior standpoint. And that's because that's what I love and know. And I know that all behavior is communication. There's a function to every single thing. They're hungry, tired, sleepy. They need attention. There's something that that behavior is saying. And I, I... I like to read that. I want to figure yeah. it out. 
what is the root of this? You're and not smacking, so for no reason. There's a root to this. But go ahead, Chrissy. Sorry, y'all. I look, I get hyped. This I told y'all. This is what they get. This is what I, they look. get. This is what, like, this is what it is. Yeah. Um, um, listen. Okay, uh, this is... We hear you. Okay. Yeah. But the other thing is... Um, I'm oily. Oh, the, the parent with all the jobs. Okay, I'm here. A lot of times is, I don't got time. Okay? Yeah. But let me tell you something. My parenting conferences are 15 minutes. Yep. Yep. My parent teacher conferences mm -hmm. are 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay? If we go in and see the For real. So, whether you are 15 minutes of first time or you might have to have 15 minutes of last time, 15 minutes of last time, right? So, you have, maybe have to block out an hour. Yeah. Um, but the conversation is 15 minutes. If it's a phone call, you, you have 15 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you don't have the to check in on your child. Cause that's how I am so that. Don't say I I you know I when I got what I have to say in the chat. Baby. Me too. Who guess what? We decided to pop out them babies. Right. Sure did. We decided to pop them babies out. So now it's not just us. Yeah. Self care is so important. Don't get me wrong. Y'all listen. Y'all know me. Y'all. Hold on. Sorry. I'm trying to charge my phone. <laughs> I figured that's what you was doing. It's okay. They so want to ask. Have to, we have to prioritize that. So no more excuses. Yes, you got to take care of you, work the job, and take care of the kids. Yes, we got to do it all. We don't the space to just make the kids fall to Nope. These are our doctors, our lawyers of the future, our Lord, can we get another Supreme Court? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did y'all did, did y'all watch the presidential debate not too long ago? Our children are the ones who yeah. have to take these places. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if we don't want the world to be that like it is right now. We have to cultivate our children differently. Right? Yes. We can't just say I'm too sleepy. Mm. We can't say I'm too busy. Right? We don't we don't we really don't have that luxury, right? We we really don't. And I want us to get to a space where we stop mm, focusing on was not going right and mm -hmm. not focusing on the negative side that I gotta do it all mm -hmm. and figure out a way to I'm trying to dial it back. I'm trying to dial it back. She real kind of just a way to to make it all work for you. Yeah. Come up with a plan to say, you know what I'm saying? Put it on your Google calendar. Mm -hmm. Now that we know about the calendar, okay? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Put it on your calendar. Yeah. Um, on the first of every month, I'm going to reach out to my teacher. I'm going to send her an email just to say, hey, how's it going? Do I need to know anything? A simple, quick message. She's going to say, yes, this is what you need to know. No, this ain't what you need to know. No, you don't need to know that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But something as simple as that, one, it lets your child know that I care about what you're experiencing when you're not with me. Yeah. I care about what is going on. I care about your education. I care about you. Mm -hmm. Right? And then it also lets the educator know I ain't a bad mama. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you're right. They will uh, will develop an opinion based on the baby they stay with your child and the behavior they don't see for you. Right. I've been to a place where I have two teachers that are so up to the basketball games. You know what I'm saying? They sit next to me cheering, right? But then I've also had the teacher who thought I was that. Hmm, they, they, they quickly realized that I'm not that one. Or the two or the three. You hear me? But, but it it lets 
my child know. It lets the teacher know. It lets the principal know, cause she know my name. I'm for real. That 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 lets everybody know I care about my children, and I'm not just throwing them to the world to figure it out on their own. It when teachers see that you care, they do. They 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 they, they act a little different. They do. They act a little yeah. different. And I know I got some teacher friends on here and no shade, no tea, okay, y'all? I still love y'all. <laughs> but they act a little different when they see that, oh, oh, I got a, I got a parent who want to know what's going on in the classroom. You know what I mean? They act differently. And so if you can put on your calendar to block out 15 minutes once a month, if you don't tell me you don't have 15 minutes once a month to check in. You do. We scroll for 25. <laughs> Easy. Okay. So don't 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 tell that lie. And if you if you if after you have heard this and you are the person that don't check in, if you are the person that Act like you could just drop them off and keep going. And you, if you, if after you've heard this, you don't make any changes, you don't care about your baby like you say you do. Come fight me, because if you can say that after thirty days you can't take a few minutes to check in with your child and their teacher, I got problems. Inbox me. We should talk. Even if it's just encouraged. Like, because educators are humans, too, just super under So, you know, and so, I, I mean, if anybody needs to prepare, but one of the most stressful jobs is an early childhood educator. It's, it, it's proven. There's facts. And so, I think that even if it's just, hey, I just wanted to let you know, especially if you have a good teacher and your child actually likes your teacher, give them that flowers while they're here. They need that encouragement, just like your pastors, your parents, your friends. They need that that encouragement as well, and I think even if it's not, if it's just in between with that check in, hey, how's everything going? Is there anywhere, you know, anything that I can do to help as far as the classroom, or even if it's not monetary value, just encouragement. Mm -hmm. Just give people, you know, yeah. hey, I was thinking about just encouragement because they need it too. It's stressful if you can't even get your one child. They got 30, 25 in the classroom, and then they gotta go home and deal with their own. Yeah, and so I just say, as well as checking in, you know, some of them do, you know, give some of them their flowers. A lot of them are definitely severely underpaid and dealing with more behaviors than they've ever dealt with in their lives. Some of them are coming in for less than a year, but not last year, because behaviors are skyrocketing. That's number one reason. Behaviors. People do not want to deal with these children's behaviors. And, you know, if you can help in any way, and you can help say, hey, that at least, you know, in the class of 30, I know one of them who ain't acting like that. And right. that was you. Right. So, how was your child acting when you're not in the room? But I was going to say something because I don't want to, you know, I feel like we might have to go into uh, another day and bring people on. But I think the major thing that I really wanted to, like, kind of end off is just to remember that our children are sponges. They are still sponges. And even if I'm talking to a child, a parent that has a child that is showing some behaviors that they've never seen, spitting, biting, hitting, talking back, um, I, 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 I kindly and softly remind you that children are like sponges at this age. And so every single thing that they suck in, whether it's the TV show, the radio, the friends they hang around, the friends you hang around, family members, certain things that they think on the games, all they're doing is sucking it all in and remember everything that a sponge soaks in eventually has to be let out. And you're going to ring it in all of those cuss words and talking back and the stuff they see in those movies, the places that you took them that they probably shouldn't have been to, all of that will break out of our children. And so we have to remember, you know, and be mindful of what our children are soaking in. They're sponges right now. They got to, oh, she said that word, let me try to say it. And not even because they, they, they want to do wrong, but just because, hey, I soaked it in, I heard it, and I let it out. You know, yep. so be mindful of what your children are soaking in, who you are letting pour onto your, 
waste onto your sponge. Who, who's pouring onto your sponge? What is pouring into your sponge? Because when it's time to come and snuggle that little sponge, all these things are going to pour out. And you're like, I didn't put that in there. How did, what, where did that come from? That came from that game. That came from that teacher that you never communicated with, that you didn't know was was putting her arm and all the bad things into your child's head, like ignoring <laughs> them instead of trying to figure out the function of their behavior. That came from that uncle that you don't even like, but you love watch your kids. That came from that babysitter that watched that terrible show around your child that made them have nightmares. So when you squeezed your baby, that sponge, all of this stuff started coming and flowing out, and you're wondering where it came from. Mindful of what you are pouring into your sponges and what other what you are allowing other people to pour onto your sponge, or I you can use it as a sponge. You can say clay, whatever is going around and sticking to your clay. That's not what you're molding, and you don't have to allow anybody, anything, or any, anything to mold your clay. Get your hands off my clay. Get that up off here. That's going to stick. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm doing. And exactly. so I just, I, I leave with that because we have to be mindful. Everything that they soak in is going to come out. So be mindful of what you are showing and, and, and bring it around and who you're bringing around and what you're saying. And we all make mistakes. Give yourself grace, but be mindful. I, um, I, listening to you say that, it makes me think about, I used to be in the car and like if somebody was to pull out in front of me, I'd be like, oh, you big head, or you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I'm yelling out something. Mm-hmm. Yep. And... I stopped like immediately because somebody pulled out in front of me one day and I heard it from the back seat. He was Ooh. screaming at the person. Yep. And I was like, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. And I was just like, I know he got it for me. Because yep. how many times have I yelled at somebody, stuck up my middle finger, something crazy in traffic? How many times? And I mean, it almost immediately, I had to instantly stop because I don't want him to think this is how we talk to people. Like, really, I might call you a little bald head, but that's just my little greeting. But outside of that, we really shouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? Shouldn't be calling these people all these names. But we do it unintentionally. And, and, and I don't think that, you know, that makes me or you a bad parent. But I think that when we realized it, like, oh, shoot, like my bad thing was, I'm uh, saying freak. Oh my gosh, what's freak? <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, what's freak? <laughs> exactly. Girl, my lovely three year old at the time was like, she's doing something. What's the freak? And I'm like, oh my God. Exactly. Like, exactly. You know, like, unintentionally. Unintentionally. Like, I know most of the bad things my kids have picked up is probably things that I've said during traffic because I know you lie. You biscuity bulldog. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because we grew up with parents that said, do as I say and not as I do. We grew up in spaces where when the grown folks was talking, you had to get out. Right? But now it's not like that. And so now we just, excuse me, we're just living our lives and our kids got front row seat. Right? They got front row seat to everything that's happening. Next week, and, we have to talk about parentification because mm-hmm. that's what that is, you know, parentifying our children. Yeah. We are soundboard for, your daddy did this, 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 that, and the third. Yo, this, yeah, like that. they, you they. Know, yeah, putting those whoop, emotions on This is emotions. taking it into a whole other. Listen, we, we can do this all night. We can put adult emotions on their children. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. Next week, we got to talk about discipline versus punishment, too. <laughs> it's so much. It is way too much to touch on, but all stuff that parents definitely we should talk about before school starts because it's real, it's raw, and it's authentic stuff that we as parents gotta look at. Yes, um, like 
I'm I'm very self-aware. That's just me. And I realize that not everybody is. And so what I'm hoping is that by you guys listening to this conversation, it's bringing some awareness, it's piquing your interest to look in the mirror and say, okay, this is what I see for myself. I don't show up to school. I don't connect with the teacher. Um, I don't go to parent-teacher conferences. I do cuss in front of the kids. You know what I'm saying? I do let them see my, you know what I'm saying, when I'm dancing on the table. I do let them go over to them, them cousins' house who probably, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So hopefully this is making you look at your situation to see how can I make this better for my children? Because what we do know is that teachers are quitting at massive numbers. What we do know is the education system as it is, is not really set up for, for right? It's not, it's, it's not set up for TikTok, right? So, so because we know this as adults, that means we have to do something. All right, we got to do something. So hopefully this conversation tonight will help you maybe um, think about it. Maybe some gems was dropped so that you can take this and be like, you know what? I am going to implement this new schedule. I am going to, you know, start them on this bedtime routine. Do that because we don't want our kids to be at the end of the line. Okay. We want to give our, our children all the things we didn't have and some. And don't tell me that your mama didn't ever go to the school. I don't care about that. You got to go, all right? You can't go back and be like, well, back in the day they used to. We not yeah. there. We here, all right? All right? We, As it pertains to this situation, we are here. Okay? So no more excuses. Let me take out my glasses. No more excuses. I have no good. You have I'm heard good. the message, all right? Like if y'all go to church, y'all know. And once you heard it, you're responsible for it. You can't act like you didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. You you are now responsible. Thank you. You are now responsible to take this new information and apply it where you see it needs to be applied. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that everything happens for a reason. So if you are listening to us tonight, all right, I believe that something in this conversation that you heard, you needed to hear. That's what I believe, all right? I hope you believe it too. But whether you don't or not, that don't mean I don't. I believe it and you heard it, all right? Amen. So our goal, our goal is to bring this conversation back again next week. And we titled it um, Back to School Boot Camp because our goal was to gear the parents up to with all the tools and the tips and the techniques and the things to get them prepared, um, to get their children prepared, right? Natalie, deal with the kids, all right? I deal with the mamas. So if you have questions about um, maybe your behaviors your child is experiencing, that type of thing, inbox Natalie, all right? Talk to Natalie about that part. But if you want to know, okay, so I got the schedule. Now I need it. Or maybe you need help to make the schedule, all right? Making the schedule, implementing the schedule, trying to figure out where do you fit in this equation because we can't. I, I'm not going to forget about y'all, all right? I'm not gonna forget about y'all. I'm not gonna forget about y'all. I'm not. I, I I do want y'all to understand that you fit in this equation as well. But once them kids go to bed at nine o'clock, you got from nine to ten to do what you need to do for you. All right. Yeah. But we ain't talking yeah. about that tonight. But if y'all need help with that part, that's what I'm for. Okay. I'm I'm to help you on your end as the adult, and Natalie is gonna help you with them little bad tail kids y'all got. All right. <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all got some angels over there. I know all y'all kids are absolute angels. I know they are. Okay. <laughs> no, oh, but for real though, that's... That, go I ahead, go ahead. I, really, I love talking behaviors. I love talking parenting um, because it's a fine 
character, and these lights have made the black like, one light. I'm, 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 it's, it's about to happen. But no, y'all, seriously, one another know the in all seriousness, seriousness, the call to the children is imperative. Um, and Chrissy knows that that is my call. I believe that I was called to save the children, and that is a gift that I have. Um, and I believe that ain't nothing for God, but I absolutely stand on um, what I'm working on, and that is uh, Sound My Solution. So, Christine plug me in, but I'm going to add my own little plug in there. Yes, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, follow my Facebook, uh, Sound My Solutions. And so, I work with educators as well as parents on identifying behaviors and working on ways to de escalate behaviors, ways that we can incorporate tra- um, transitions, ways we can incorporate. Ways that we can stop yelling, parentifying our children, alternatives to the word no, bedtime routines, morning routines, just trying to be fruitful parents. Um, and that, that's my happy place. That is where I thrive and where uh, now self-care, you go ahead and hit on my sister <laughs> because she can get you to get into your right mind to be able to go inside the house and, and deal and use the strategies that I've given you to be able to work with your children. And again, I can work with parents that don't have children that have challenging behaviors. But really, those challenging behaviors, things like spitting, biting, um, and things that you're not used to, talking back, or just, you know, loud children. That's my thing. My kids are loud. <laughs> Keeping them busy. Ways to, you know, incorporate one-on-one time with them. Um, you know, pick it up. I definitely look forward to next week. I'm excited. I'm Yay! Excited. So Tonight was so good. Okay, so I wrote it down. Um, so some of the stuff that I have written down, organization, after school routines. Um, did we talk about setting expectations? I don't. Uh, I, maybe we did a little bit. So that's that part. So we're going to talk about that next week as well. Um, and then, oh, also Title One. Okay, so let me say this. I'm just, this is getting us ready for next week, okay, y'all? So I'm going to say this. Oh, we did that too. Okay, so Title I, just go look it up. Go Google it between now and next week. And hopefully next week y'all can get in the comments and talk to us about it and let us know how you feel about it because we already know how we feel about it, okay? But look up Title I. So do I need it? Let me see. How do I need it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to I'm about to Google title, it right now. What a Title One school is. Look up and see what a Title One school is. You'll see that Title One title schools. Title. And and it, it, right here, Indiana. It brought it right up to for me. Okay, so look that up for next week because we're gonna discuss that, and I feel like that's a really, really, really important subject. Yeah. Um, but that we had to lay the foundation first, right? Uh, we had to let y'all know what we was on and what we was trying to do first. Yeah. Now, um, next week, we are going to talk about Title I schools and what that means for your baby. And then also, we're going to talk about discipline versus punishment, parentif- parentification, and yelling parents. That's what I have for next week. Are we going to get to all of them subjects? I don't know. But it's on my paper. It's on my paper. So I don't know if we'll get to all of that. But I do know that it is our goal to be back here next Wednesday. Same time, same place. And we're going to make sure that we are in tip-top shape. Or at least the best we can be by the time school starts. Okay? Okay. It's for the kids. Y'all know, like, I don't really have a calling, per se, to the children. However, I do see a very, very, very um, big need as it pertains to that. And so even though this is not my usual arena, I, I do want to make sure that I'm doing my part as a parent, as a, a citizen, 
as friends of teachers, as friends of other parents. Like, I want to make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure we can all, you know, succeed and pour into these babies. Because they're our future, okay? And when I was little, I couldn't really see what I would be doing as an adult because I had a whole lot of trauma that I was dealing with. And so I want us to be able to deal with our stuff so we're not having our kids deal with it and sending them to school. Amen. 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 All right, so that's the benediction, y'all, okay? Announcements has been read. May the Lord watch. Amen. Now, that's all I got for real, though, y'all. I know I've, I've been a little bit dramatic and theatrical. I love it. But this is what happens when you don't get a whole lot of sleep, okay? I'm... Here we are, okay? Here we are. Um, but no, for real, though, on a serious tip, I hope that something was said tonight that um, that was helpful to you, whether you have children or not. Um, I'm sure you know somebody with some kids. And even if you don't have no kids, your children are out of school or whatever, see what you can do. Maybe you got an extra couple dollars because Natalie mentioned earlier, there are teachers who um, buy personal hygiene products, all kind of stuff. A lot of their classroom supplies come out of their pocket. Yes. So if you have a couple extra dollars, you know what I'm saying? Go drop it off to the school. If you know a teacher friend, go say, hey, what you need for your classroom? I got, you know what I'm saying? A, a couple dollars. Yes. <laughs> teachers are posting. You know what? Let me see if I can. Mm. Teachers are, are posting their Amazon wish list. And I know for sure of two. And... Let me see if I can tag. Hmm. I'm going to figure out how to put their wish list in the comments of this video. So if you are somebody who you don't have, you don't have um, any children in school or whatever, um, I will have their wish list. I know of two as of right now off the top of my head. I put them in the comments of this video and y'all can buy at your own free will. Um, but that's all that I have. Be nice to your teachers. Be nice to your kids. And I love y'all. You got a baby over there. You need to go to you too. This fly is trying to eat me. Okay. Oh, like, this is not okay. I do not do things that fly. You don't do. You don't. You don't do. You don't do. No, and it, it, it'll you, wear, you know when the flies get close to your end and like. I can't, I can't, I can't. We gotta go, y'all. Turn your light off. Bye. <laughs> but I love y'all. Thank y'all for spending time with me. I don't take that lightly. I know there was people that was passing through. I don't take that lightly at all. Thank you for spending your time with me. As always, I love y'all, and I will see y'all next time. Peace. Thank you, TikTok, for showing up for you, girl, as you always do. Thank you to all the gifts and the follows. I love y'all, and I will see y'all next time.